Let's talk about the supplies first, and you can get a link to your supply list as well as a printable version of the directions in the link below. So the first thing you need is four 10 inch squares. So two for the inside and two for the outside. I'm gonna be using my Gnomes in Love fabric for this demo. Then you need two pieces of either nylon paracord or whatever kind of cord you wanna use, each 28 inches long two, so one that will be on the front, one that will be on the back for the, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the top part, uh, two inches wide by nine and a half inches long. Then we're going to be cutting little two inch notches out of the bottom of each bag. So I'm going to be using my little cute cuts two and a half inch because it'll be really easy to just mark and cut that um, using a fabric erasable pen and scissors. So that's what you need to get started. First, you're gonna prepare the bag pieces. So it's a 10 by 10 square. And if you're using directional fabric like I am, make sure you're cutting out of the bottom. I turned it upside down. Um, anyway, so you don't wanna cut up here. You wanna cut down here because you wanna cut out the notch of the bottom of the bag. So it's gonna be able to stand up. So I'm just going to take this little cute cut square. It's a two and a half inch square. Just put it in the corner. Take my fabric pen. Draw on each corner. And then cut. Cut out the notches. So now we have a shape like that. And then you're going to repeat with the second piece. Now we're going to prepare the drawstring channels, which are our two pieces, nine and a half inches long by two inches wide. So we're going to turn them right side down, and then we're just going to press about a quarter inch on each end. Then we're going to fold them in half with the raw edges together. You can do the same thing for both, for both of these. All right, so those are ready. Move on to the next step. Now that we have the drawstring channels pressed and ready to go, we are going to take them and clip them with the raw edges at the top of the outside fabric, bag fabric. So whichever fabric you want on the outside, you're going to clip these or pin just like this. And then you're gonna sew across that top raw edge with an eighth inch seam. It's really just to tack it down for when, so it's in place for when we put the whole bag together. Now, it's very important. So on this, I've decided to use two different um, fabrics for the drawstring channel just to make it a little bit more fun and it's really important though even if you're using two different fabrics don't get confused and put one on the outside fabric bag fabric and one on the inside or you're gonna have a bag that doesn't match on the outside and the inside don't ask how I know but I know so we've clipped that and now I'm just gonna take it and run a eighth inch stitch it's stitch at an eighth inch from the raw edges and I'll be right back. So now I have the drawstring channel tacked onto the outside fabric so when it folds up it's going to go like that and now I'm going to put these right sides together just lining up all of the edges and I'm going to clip these you can clip or pin and we're gonna sew down these two sides and across the bottom, but not along the notches, because that is where we're going to sew to make the flat bottom later. So for the outside, with the drawstring channel, it's just straight, straight, straight. All right, set that aside for a minute. Now, for the inside, where you haven't done anything, it's just the two pieces of fabric that you cut, we have two things to consider. 
uh, and you're gonna do right sides together again. So if you have a tag, like I have my logo tag, that you wanna put on the inside of the bag, now is the time. So you're going to sandwich it in there and just line it up with that raw edge and you're going to clip that. Clip that side. Now, you, oh, no, there was a reason I'd have two hot pink ones. We're gonna clip this side. Okay, it's very important to leave a few inches open so that you can turn this reversible bag right side out once you're done sewing. Because if you sew these all shut, well, you can use a seam ripper and make a hole later, but it's better to just do it at the beginning. So when I need to leave space, I often use a different color clip or different size so I remember. Like I'm only gonna sew from here to here and here to here so that we're leaving that open. So this is the outside of my bag that has both of the drawstring channels on it. So I'm going to simply sew with a quarter inch seam around the three edges. Now I'm going to sew quarter inch seam on the inside, leaving this space at the bottom open for turning. Now I have all these um, edges sewn. I'm gonna to go to my ironing board and I'm going to um, iron open all of the seams. And I'm going to be using a tailor's ham, this thing which uh, a lot of people use if they do a lot of fashion showing, sewing and clothes, but it's great for just getting into kind of small areas rather than a big ironing board. So you can take it like that. So I will be right back after I get these ironed open and we'll do the next step. All right, now I've pressed open the seams on both the outer and the inner part of the bag. And on the inner part where we had left a piece open for turning, I still pressed it so it looked like it was sewn because that's gonna make it really easy for you to slip stitch that when we're all done and nobody will know where you turned, like the bag came together like magic. Now the next thing we need to do is make these box corners for the bottom. So this is the area that we cut out in the beginning and we're just going to take the corners of the cut, pull it out flat, we're gonna line up these seams Make that flat and then we're just going to sew across there with a quarter inch seam and we're going to do that on all four corners two on the inside two on the outside okay we're getting close now we have two little pouches the outside and the inside now i'm going to turn the inner lining right side out so that I can put the bag together, right sides together. And we're going to be matching, matching the bottoms, the side seams, and clipping all the way around. So match up that side seam. And I always just kind of loosely put it in and then start by matching both of the side seams. And then I'm gonna clip around the top because the next step is going to be to sew all around the top, which is going to encase the drawstring channel in this bag. I don't know, I like this. It's a, it takes a little bit more time than a regular drawstring bag, but it's a little more interesting, I think. So if I'm gonna make a bag, I'm gonna do it. Now, because we left a little bit open in the lining for turning, we can just stitch all the way around this. There's gonna be no openings in the top, and we're gonna do that with a quarter inch seam. All 
right, so we've sewn all around the edge and now we are going to turn it right side out through that hole that we left in the lining. Now to put less strain on the edges of that lining area that we left open, I like to make sure I start by getting it flipped over. That makes sense? So kind of turned. And then just gently pull that through. And then once it's inside out, well, you're gonna take um, and sew that closed by hand, just a simple slip stitch. And then once you get that done, just put it together and then press this. And then I'll show you how to put the drawstring in and we will finish this up, but isn't it cute? We're almost done. All we have to do is insert our cords. So I like to use this nylon paracord. We have two pieces that are 28 inches long each and um, be very careful if you do this at home. I basically just melt the ends so they don't fray. You just let the flame touch it just a teeny bit and it just melts and seals that. So that lasts for a really long time. You can also use a cotton, cotton cord or ribbon or what have you. Um, the cleaner the cut, the less you have to melt. So anyway, that's simple. Then I'm going to take one of my quilting pins put it through the cord. And now I'm just going to loop it all the way around. Now I chose not to stitch along the edge of that. Remember we, um, at the very beginning, we ironed that under about a quarter inch. I just like the cleaner look, but it does make it a little trickier when you're putting your cord through. You just have to make sure your pin doesn't go under that flap. All right, so we went through the one side, now we're gonna go through the other. got it under that flap. So I usually put my finger in there to help separate it more and get the pin out. Or it might just come out and then you just tuck it back in. You got to see all the all the things that could happen. All right, so I got it through all the way around and through. Now I'm going to take the two ends, pull and even that out, and then just put a knot In that. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to start at the opposite side with this second cord. All right, remove the pin, grab the two ends, tie a knot. And then just even that out. So now we have our double drawstring and it's really cute. Kind of has a long, a long string. You can use it for carrying. And again, it is reversible. So we can have this side out. Maybe a different day, we want the pink side out. Pink side out. So this would make a great bag for gift giving. Um, you could use this obviously for Valentine's Day. Maybe a bridal shower if the bride is into gnomes and can be done in any fabric that you want. Mm -hmm.